Hello and welcome once again to the Pro Tips of Football Show. We have a distinctly European flavour today. Of course, we have plenty of Premier League and Championship action, but we'll also be turning our heads towards La Liga, Bundesliga, and we might even have some cheeky Portuguese action as well. We'll even have guests on today's show. Well, one guest actually, one's dropped out already. Uh, we'll have our Pro Tipster, Hispania representative, to give us some more insight into his home league. Joining me today are Pro Tipster Martin, Pro Tipster Johnny, and in studio, Pro Tipster Dan. You can, of course, listen to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and other Android podcatchers, YouTube, and on our Pro Tipster blog as well. And you can get in touch with us via Pro Tipster UK on Facebook. So look, enough of the rambling. Let's uh, welcome the boys. Hello, Dan. Hi there. Hello, Martin. Hello. Hello, Johnny. Hello, guys. Very good. Right, let's uh, kick off then. Dan, uh, the Sheffield Derby, the Steel City Derby, the seventh place Sheffield United are taking on 16th Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, let me give you something here. Sheffield United have won 8 out of 13 home matches, and there have been under 2.5 goals in uh, 13 out of 19 Sheffield Wednesday away matches. That probably won't change your opinion on the, on anything, but... Mm. Is it? Bo- both teams, um, neither team are in form at the moment. Um, Sheffield United have been on the slide just of late. Um, I think they're trying to arrest that. One of the few teams that have been really active at the start of the transfer window, they brought in uh, Ryan Leonard, midfielder from South End. Uh, Lee Evans, midfielder from Wolves, and James Wilson on loan from Man U, who's a uh, forgotten manager strike, who's actually the second James Wilson to currently play for Sheffield United. They've got James Wilson out on loan at Warsaw as well. Um, Sheffield Wednesday, um, they're 16th at the moment in the table. They, they got rid of Carlos Carvalho. Uh, they brought in... Um, um, I should be so Luhuke. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I, more, since Martin's like put that in my mind, I, I can't get rid of it. Um, it's like so. <laughs> this is his championship debut game, I think. Um, it's going to be a really interesting one. The, the bookies have uh, put Sheffield United as marginal favourites, and you know what? I've got to go with it. Um, there's been Sheffield United's form is marginally better, and their home form is is. is Pretty decent. Five wins in the last ten. So I'm going for Sheffield tonight at 1.87. Um, hopefully, um, I'm back on the hype train and they'll, they'll start winning for me again. Uh, Martin, what have you gone for here? Uh, pretty much uh, exactly the same as Dan. Sheffield United um, at 1.87. I just, I just can't see Sheffield Wednesday getting anything out of the game. Um, you know, Sheffield United won it at Hillsborough four two last time out. I know it's a derby, so you know anything can happen. But um, one win and eleven for Sheffield Wednesday, and you know Sheffield United aren't in the best of form at the minute. But I think they'll get the win they need to to bounce back into the playoffs because they started to drift drift away a little bit. But yeah, I, I certainly think this will be this will be the game where Sheffield United do the double over Sheffield Wednesday. All right, very good. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, Johnny doesn't like the championship, so uh, we won't have you, Johnny. But uh, I'm going to get you for the next match. So we're off to Germany now for another Friday night match, where uh, Poland's favourite German international, Łukasz Podolski, because he's actually Polish, has added a kebab shop to his portfolio of eateries alongside his ice cream yes. parlour. Isn't that amazing? Can I can I can I just say that I'm going to that on Monday? Oh yes. I'll let you know how to how the kebab tastes. Oh, you better loads of photos Martin loads of photos we want loads yes. of photos um, so fourth place uh, Bayer Leverkusen are taking on first uh, Bayern Munich uh, let me give you a stat here uh, Johnny before we go to there have been over 2.5 goals in 8 out of 10 Leverkusen matches and 3.5 and over 3.5 in 6 out of 10 and Bayern have scored first in 8 out of 11 away matches so Johnny uh, what tickled your fancy here that's a that's a big match in Bundesliga on, on Friday, uh, it's always tricky to to predict the match uh, after winter break. Although the winter break in Germany is not that that long. Uh, looking at, I was looking at the at the odds and the different markets. Uh, one thing that stood out for me because the Asian handicap for me didn't have any any value. So I was looking at both teams to score no at two point three six. Quite high odds, considering that Bayern Munich are defensively improved under Heinkes. Uh, so this this one stands out for me as, as to be honest, the only valuable 
pick from from the, from this game. Uh, Bayer still got Neuer out and Thiago out. I read that Lewandowski is doubtful, which would be obviously a big blow. The same with Hummels in the in the back. Uh, they're comfortably in the in in the, in the in the lead of the league. So I think. It's been more than two years that uh, Bayern lost to Leverkusen, and I don't think they're going to lose uh, again. So it's always tricky, as I said, after winter break, but uh, both teams to score no at 2.36. Johnny, do you you think Sandro Wagner will uh, make a difference? Because they brought him in in the transfer window uh, as depth for uh, Lewandowski. If Lewandowski won't play, because he's a doubt, do you think that they'll be okay with Wagner? I think that that it's it is a there is a there is a good chance that he might step up if, if, in case Lewandowski is out. But uh, I think they will make the whole team, the whole, the whole staff will do everything they can to 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 have Lewandowski on the on the, on the field because having Lewandowski up front is a completely different Bayern to to having Bayern without Lewandowski. Uh, and it's obviously a short time that Sandro is in, so. Yeah, if, if Lewandowski cannot play, then, then yes, but uh, I think Lewandowski will make it. Cool, good stuff. Uh, Martin, you want to this? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite an intriguing matchup, to be honest. Um, I don't know, I don't know how much difference the winter break is going to make. Cause like Johnny said, it's not, it's not that big, but. You know, Munich could come back fresh. Um, and I think at 1.83 is pretty good value. Um, I expected them to be a little bit, a little bit shorter, but, you know, Munich haven't actually won in Leverkusen in the last five visits. So maybe, maybe that's why Munich are the price they are. But yeah, I just, I just think, um, on paper, they, they have enough to beat Leverkusen. But again, if Johnny says the injuries that potentially Bayern Munich have, if, you know, the likes of Lewandowski and Hummels are, are missing, then and it could go the other way. So I'll, I'll wait for the lineups on this, but I think Munich are, are pretty decent value. Very good stuff. Dan, you at them? I'm going for Bayern to win. Um, I do I, I do agree that, you know, Munich have got a few injuries to worry about. I think Josh Kimmich might be out as well. Um, I think he faced a late, late fitness test. But um, I don't know. Um, if you look at Munich's form, the form alone just screams they're going to win. Um, they've won seven times out, uh, from their last ten away games. I know Leverkusen are unbeaten since uh, the 20th of September. I think it's 12 games in Bundesliga. But Bayern are a, a different a different thing, a different force. And I just thought 1.83 was a bit big. I, I, I expect them to be shorter. So mm. I thought there was value there, and I've gone for it. All right, very good. Uh, let's move on to... Uh... Saturday then so um, <clears throat> third place Chelsea taking on uh, Leicester City in eight um, uh, Martin we'll start with you yeah go on um, I don't know I'm not, I'm not really I'm not already had a bet on this year I think I think Chelsea will probably go and win it but I just think they're a little bit too short in my opinion um you know, 12 wins the last 14 meetings for Chelsea against Leicester. Um, but is Mar- 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 is not in great form at the minute. Um, so I think they, they kind of need to rely on Hazard to, um, to win them games at the moment. And is Vardy going to be fit for Leicester? That's another question mark. So this is a game where I, where I will wait for the lineups because, um, if Vardy's missing, then that's a huge loss. And I, I, I know Okazaki's decent, but, um, I don't know if he can fill the void. Um, if Vardy doesn't play and uh, random stat I found one clean sheet in the last 21 games uh, Leicester have kept against Chelsea um, Tim Flowers it was who last kept the last clean sheet Whoa. in 2000 so that's nearly 18 years ago um, so I, I, I see Chelsea winning it but the value's not there for me to, to really have a bet ok fair enough uh, Johnny um, yeah Martin was Speaking about being very doubtful, uh, I read also that Fuchs is doubtful, but what concerns me more is that uh, Wes Morgan is out and Simpson is out. So so mm. I, I can see it. Leicester might struggle not... Well, if, if Vardy don't, doesn't play, that they might struggle up front, but also in the back. Uh, and as you said, uh, Martin, they, they, they are not uh, a team that... Let's say this way, uh, Chelsea are obviously 
favorites uh, for me as well. But those of you who listen to our podcast regularly know that I like to pick underdogs. So I was looking at the at the odds and the markets, and the one thing that stands out for me, even despite the injuries, even if Vardy doesn't play, uh, even with Morgan and Simpson out, uh, Dragovic will probably play in, in the center back position. I, f- I found Leicester plus 1.75 Asian handicap at 1.8. I think this line and this price is, is pretty okay for Leicester traveling to Stamford Bridge. Uh, having said that, I expect Chelsea to, Chelsea to prevail, to win, but ju- I just see this line as a, as, as a value. Uh, this line wins with, with a, if Chelsea wins by one, if they win by two, then it's half lost, which is which I would take this risk. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Dan? Um, I've not had a bet on this yet either, like Martin. I think, I, I think I'm going to wait for the lineups. I've, I've written Vardy question mark as well. Um, I, I, Chelsea have won seven in a row at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League, so I can understand why they're so sure. Um, but again, like Martin says, Morass is not in great form. Batshuayi just isn't uh, playing well at all and I think the midfield as well um, there's questions there I know uh, like I've written can't take drink water because obviously both got the Leicester connection I can't see drink I thought drink water was poor uh, last night against Arsenal so I think um, we'll see uh, Fabregas come back in um, but I don't know I, I, I wonder if the uh, the the, the Rapid turnover of games is going to cost Chelsea because they don't have the strength and depth that teams like Man City or Man U have, and I think it might cost them. So the line, which um, I've got 1.5, is is about where the line is. So like that's where both sides are equal-ish. What did you think of them against Arsenal? As I thought they were kind of out of ideas, and Arsenal were very under strength. Yeah, well, that that's what I mean. It's like how how Chelsea reached the point where they have played so many games like in so little time. That you know they're, they're tired out um, because uh, they don't have. Look, you look at Man City. Man City have played uh, month, like weekend, week, uh, midweek, every week since October. But Man City have got a real strength and depth across the team, whereas Chelsea don't. Chelsea are very reliant on Morata up front. If Morata doesn't play, then they're having to play a false nine. Uh, players like Pedro aren't stepping up. Pedro's, uh, you know, Pedro's been poor when he's played. Batchway has been poor when he's played. Defensively, they've been good. You know, um, I think Christensen and Rudiger have both stepped up. Zappa Costa looks a good signing, but it's that lack of strength and depth that's going to cost them, I think. And I think this might be a game where, again, I expect they'll win, but I don't think they'll take Leicester apart. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Next up is Spurs and Everton. Johnny, let's go with you first. Spurs versus Everton. Spurs in fifth, Everton in ninth. Uh, another one where I where I fancy the underdog uh, in an Asian handicap of uh, Everton plus two Asian handicap at 1.79. Um, Tottenham are obviously big favourites to win this game and Everton's got some missings as well. Uh, they will... I believe that Everton will have to play very cautious, in very cautious approach if they want to keep Tottenham um, far from the from from the from the box. Uh, Tottenham will obviously play for the win. They will play very offensively. Uh, they, I think they found their home form already at, at uh, Wembley. But still, this this line is uh, is a value. It, it represents value to me because even if Tottenham win by two, it's a stake back. So. Everton plus two at one point seven nine. Yeah, very good. Good spot. Dan. Um I'm going for I'm going to wait for the lineups for this one. Um I think Spurs will win. Spurs are unbeaten ten at home in the Premier League. Everton have one away win in nineteen Premier League games. Um obviously Everton should give a debut to new striker Chank Tosson. I think the big question is how Spurs will put, uh, will deal with uh, Big Sam's anti football tactics, his parking the bus, which he's no lot he's likely to do. Um, so the question is central midfield, will he play Dembele? Will he play um, who who will he play in those central two slots behind the attacking players? I think if Spurs have the right mix of players in the midfield in the midfield, they should win and win comfortably. 
but until I see the lineups, I don't know. So that's that's it for me. Fair enough, man. Um, Martin. Yeah, um, I think Spurs will end up winning this. Like Dan said, Everton aren't, aren't great away from home. Um, however, I found a little bit of value on over one and a half first half goals at 2.32. thought that was a little bit higher based on um, three of the last four meetings have seen over one and a half in the first half. And six of the last seven, there's been goals in the first half. So I think in this game, the, the you know, Spurs seem to come out of the traps pretty early, um, so I can see them doing that again. And yeah, I think I think two point three two for over one and a half first half goals is pretty decent value for me. Next up from the Championship, uh, Nottingham Forest are taking on Aston Villa. Forest in fourteenth with a very famous win against Arsenal. Uh, one of the players even uh, named his dog Gunner. Isn't that right? Yeah. He scored. That's what. Yeah. Uh, I did find a couple of, one stat here. Um, two stats. There have been under two point five goals in thirteen out of twenty. Aston Villa away matches and they've drawn the first half in 7 and 12 away here Dan since you're the Birmingham expert ok so um, a stat for you the last time Forrest drew at home in the championship was March 17 games ago they either win or lose at home um, their form is patchy but obviously they've got a new manager in uh, I saw Karanka um, and they're coming off the back of a, a brilliant win over Arsenal, although it was Arsenal's second or third string. Uh, whereas the team whose name I do not like to pronounce, um, they lost to Peterborough convincingly 3-1. Um, and their fans are pretty, pretty pessimistic about them playing on Sky. I think it's because they don't quite understand what television is. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they're a bit confused about these modern sort of amenities. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm biased. You have to accept I'm biased. I'm never, ever going to back them to win. So Forest at 2.96, kind of... I, I, but I like the value in it because... Um, that that mob who play in Claret and Blue, they, they're very fickle. They go from loving Steve Bruce to hating him, and at the moment they hate him because of the Peterborough thing, and they've still got masses of injuries. Yes, Scott Hogan finally found what scoring goals was again uh, when they beat Bristol City 5-0, and that was a bit of a shocking result. I did not see that one coming, but... I don't know. They don't perform well on Sky. Um, Forrest have got the potential of a new manager bounce. And, yeah, the, the, they've got this Peterborough hangover. So, Forrest at 2.96. Good stuff. Uh, Martin? Um, yeah, so, I, I'm going against Dan a little bit. Um, in fact, mm. I think, I don't know, Forrest are a bit hit and miss for me for, to, to actually back them. Um, but then again, Villa, like, like Dan said, lost the partial. Although they did play a few kids. So, I don't know how... Um, I don't know how that will affect things. They did smash, don't forget, Bristol City 5-0 before that um, at home. But I'm actually, four of the last five meetings have seen over over two and a half goals between these two sides. And both sides are averaging, averaging over a goal a game in the league at the minute. So I'm going to go over two and a half goals here. I think it's de- decent value at 2.10. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Johnny, when we were talking earlier, you wanted to mention uh, something. Another Bundesliga match, uh, fifth place Leipzig, Red Bull Leipzig are taking on a rising ball Leipzig Rassenball Sport Rassenball Sport ah. <laughs> Red Bull Red Bull Red Bull free Red Bull give me free Red Bull um, versus second place Schalke and uh, a Portuguese match fourth place Braga versus uh, third place Benfica so what are your predictions for those now lads we have about seven minutes left for these two matches it's four matches ok so four matches in seven minutes let's go ok I'll be quick all right, so yeah, all attention is on Bayern uh, against Leverkusen game, but there is also an interesting one: Leipzig against Schalke, uh, fifth against second. Uh, whilst Schalke are on a really good good run, their last defeat, the league defeat, is from September. Uh, Leipzig, are on, the, on the contrary, are on a bad run, and their last win comes from the end of November. Uh, while Leipzig is uh, far, far more inconsistent than they were. Uh, last last season when they were pushing Bayern for, for the title, Schalke on the other hand, uh, although they they are uh, 11 points behind Bayern, they are pretty consistent. They, they they played some very entertaining games, score quite a lot of goals. So for this one, I fancy Schalke plus 0.25 Asian handicap at 2.09. Uh, alternatively, over 2.5 goals at 1.78. 
Getting to the Portuguese game, which I wanted to talk about, is Braga vs. Benfica. I talked to my Portuguese friend for this podcast. It's a very... Uh, the game is in spotlight. Uh, the teams don't really like each other. So we are expecting quite a nervous game. Uh, some trouble, maybe, on the pitch. Uh, Benfica are, this year, not the team that can compete for the title. They are underperforming. They've got their captain, Luisao, out, injured, which actually, according to Portuguese press uh, journalists, um, might be actually not that bad <laughs> uh, because they can play quite a quick game without him. Uh, the, the key player for Benfica in this game will be Kravinovic, who can link up nicely with jo- uh, Jonas up front. Uh, how- however, we think that uh, Benfica is not at, this, at the state they are at the moment. Uh, they are not that heavy favorites uh, to play, especially away from home against Braga, who are three points behind Benfica in the standings. So, with prediction for this game is Braga zero point plus zero point five at one point seven nine. Jonas, like, Jonas must be like a million years old by now. I remember having him on an old Championship manager <laughs> and Luisa. Yeah. <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Right, we have a guest in here in studio today from a Pro Tipster España. So, Pro Tipster David, I suppose I should call you. Yeah, how's it Hi, going? Hi, Nate. Hi, everyone. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is a, a new thing on the podcast. We're going to uh, start getting in our Italian and uh, Spanish uh, experts uh, from now on. Uh, Marco from Italy will be starting uh, next week. So, it's a little uh, five-minute slot where we'll talk to someone who's more of an expert on La Liga than we are. So, David, what's happening this weekend in Spain? Well, the weekend we have perhaps the best game, the more interesting game is Real Madrid plays against Villarreal. Real Madrid falls in the league, you know, seven, 17 points down Barcelona. So the league probably is over for Real Madrid. And now it's tough to say, but they are fighting for the fourth place, you know, third, fourth place. Valencia is third, 37 points. So it's Real Madrid five, five points down. Uh, Valencia and we are really going to Bernabeu and we are really four points down Real Madrid so you know situation is hard for Real Madrid this season yesterday drawing the Spanish Cup against Numancia team from the second league I, I watched the game and I mean I didn't see it. You sound ecstatic. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, tell us, um, tell us from someone who, who reads the, the Spanish press, because we only get get to read the, the the British press and Irish press take on stuff. Whoa. Uh, in in Spain, what's what's the story with, with Zidane? How much pressure is he under? I mean, they have a lot of pressure right now. People people are talking that probably he making some mistake with the lineup. People say that the the best player. I mean, not maybe. We have the best player right now playing, but probably the guy that they are training harder, they are not playing too much. The case of, for example, we have Lucas Basquet. He got like four goals in these uh, two games versus Numantia. He scored in one of the of the games. However, he not playing too much in the league. Maybe last five ten minutes only. And the situation is that people people thought that maybe Zidane. During the game, he, he cannot read the games too well, you know. They are making the substitutions too late when probably the game is almost over all the time playing the same 11. And uh, right now, for example, I, I can say, I can say that, uh, Modric and, um, and Tony Cross, they are in no very good shape. They are still playing, but the shape is not so good. And I mean, for me, this is on Real Madrid. Probably they are not going, I mean, I hope they will get something, but probably they are not going to get any title. He's this a Madrid fan, yeah. by the way, folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the whole uh, Coutinho to Barcelona, I don't know, let me turn it down. The whole Coutinho to Barcelona, you know, we've spoken about it a bit on the pod, but um, uh, do you see him, is he going to go straight into the team, or, or what, what's his role going to be? Well, obviously he's going to have to go into the team, spending so much money on him, but... 
like a lot of the British press were saying that this was a statement by Barca because they lost Neymar. Like, is he going to? Do you see him slotting into the team? What's he going to bring to Barcelona? Oh, for the moment he's injured, so oh. it will be it will be <laughs> twenty twenty days resting in Barcelona. So it will be good for him. But uh, for this season, for me, I think it's not going to be a problem for Barcelona because he cannot play in Champions League. He already played with Liverpool. So probably uh, people 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 think that he will he will be playing in the league like uh, like giving the uh, resting to to Iniesta and people from the from the midfield. But uh, next season we'll see. Next season it will be hard because you have Dembele, Messi, Suarez, Iniesta, Rakitic, Coutinho. Oh, scary, isn't it? Too many players in attack, but uh, you need to get to get back to the defense. So they also have one of the best named defenders in the world, uh, Umtiti. Umtiti, and today, <laughs> today they they sign up uh, Jerry Mina, the uh, Colombian uh, guy yeah. from Palmeiras, because mm. uh, Macherano is going to China probably the winter market. Uh-huh. Macherano wants to move to China, and Jerry Mina is going to to Barcelona. Okay. I mean, they are making very good team, very good transfer in the winter. But I don't know. In this season, okay, Coutinho will be play for sure in the cup, in the league. But next season, I don't know. Even next season, they are they are they are talking about uh, Griezmann. Griezmann go to to Barcelona. But I don't know if they want to play with thirteen players. <laughs> <laughs> it will be good for them. But <laughs> right. Okay, David. So one more question then. Do you have a do you have a, t- a tip of the weekend? Uh, no yet. For the moment, I'm thinking for the Friday, there is the first game is uh, Getafe versus Malaga. I mean, they are two two teams that in different shape, you know. Getafe playing really well this season. They are in the middle of the table, no problem. And Malaga is opposite. They are the last one. Uh, many many problems with the coach, the president, Alta- Altani, the guy from from Qatar, I think something mm-hmm. like that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to, to put more money in the team. They have many problems. He's not going to Malaga since May. So they have many, many problems with that guy. So probably for me that, that game, it could be, I was thinking about uh, under two and a half goals for Friday. Getafe play well. They play at home in Getafe the stadium. Um, probably under two and a half goal, it would be interesting for that game. And for the weekend, no yet, you know, I'm thinking about it, something probably Real Madrid Villarreal. Maybe something against Real Madrid, because they are in no good shape. Uh, they are at home, but you know, maybe Villarreal can get something, some points for Ber- from Bernabeu, but. Okay. Cool, I don't right. know yet. Well, look, David, thanks very much, and we'll no see problem. you next week, okay? For sure, for sure. Thanks Thank you so much. Gracias. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Protipster IRL, Protipster EN, or Protipster DAN. Or on Facebook at Protipster UK. So uh, that was our Spanish expert there, uh, Pro Tipster David, for the Real uh, for the Real uh, game. But it was something that we wanted to have a look at. Uh, Martin, did you see Anton here? Um, I didn't. You know, you know what? I don't think there's any value in it for me. Um, Real Madrid are in terrible form, but I expect them to go and win the game. One point two five is very very short for me, so I'll, I'll be avoiding this. But I fully expect Villarreal have a terrible terrible record in the league at the Bernabeu, so fully expect Real Madrid to win this by a couple, but no value for me at all to, to have a bet. Yeah, fair enough, uh, Dan. The only thing I, 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 I'm not uh, an expert on Spanish football, so I'm not going for anything. The only thing I was going to add is Villarreal have lost one of their best players, Cedric Macamba, who's gone to Beijing Groan for 74 million euros so he's now the most expensive African player ever um, 43 40 something million was the transfer fee the rest is taxed to the Chinese government <laughs> and Macamba will be earning 18 million euros a year in Come China in. there you go <laughs> Charlie did you see that in here um I'm jumping on Villarreal plus two Asian handicap at 1.81. I think in the last three seasons, Villarreal always managed to take some points uh, off uh, Real Madrid. Uh, Seeing Real Madrid play recently is... uh, they are struggling. They are they lack offensive creativity. Like David was saying, uh, I think Zidane can stick with his 
always sticks with uh, mostly with his starting eleven, but doesn't have any alternatives if something goes really wrong, like in recent weeks. Uh, they've got Ramos out, which is a big is a, is a big big loss uh, in the back. Um, so yeah, the, in in the current form they are and. Historically, that Villarreal can always trouble Real Madrid, even away from home. Villarreal plus two Asian handicap uh, is 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 the pick. If if they lose by two, it's a stake back. So okay, it's a value for. All right, very good. Thanks, Johnny. Um, right then, our last match then comes from Sunday. Fourth place, Liverpool have taken on Man City. Liverpool have drawn the first half in nine out of fifteen home games. Man City have uh, won eleven out of twelve away matches. Um, Dan, start with you. Um, I've just written Man City hype train. <laughs> Literally, um, it's a little bit early for me to um to be looking at putting a bet on uh, for the simple reason I want to know about lineups. I want to know about formations. I'm not I, I'm not fussed about Coutinho going from Liverpool because as we talked about in the combined eleven uh, before, I don't think Coutinho was actually the man for Liverpool. Um, he's injured. He's been injured anyway. Um, there's a question that uh, Marco Sal- uh, Salah's fitness, whether he will be fit enough to play. So that's an issue. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Man City's forward line against Liverpool's defence. Although with Virgil Van Dijk, they're going to be su- uh, uh, a lot better. Um, but Man City's defence was really tested by Bristol City, I thought. Um, so it- it's going to be interesting to see how um, Pep changes things up. But yeah, this one's one where I'm waiting for the, a little bit more information. Okay, good. Uh, Johnny? Um, interesting game. Uh, I'll be eager to see if uh, Liverpool can finally beat... If there's, a, if there's a team that can finally beat City, I don't think so, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as the, fr- as the first head-to-head game, 5-0 for, for City earlier in the season. Uh, but... Uh, but yeah, Liverpool is going to do some trouble to City, but I th- still think that uh, City are just, they just play their own league. Uh, the, the question for me is whether Van Dijk it can uh, can stop Aguero. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong, wrong his name. Uh, but the prediction for this one for me is City minus 0.25 at 1.92. Okay, good. And we'll finish with you then, Martin. Yeah, um, yeah, huge game. I think, you know, I think it's Man City's biggest test, to be honest. Um, not won at Anfield in the league since 2003. Uh, Liverpool won the last four meetings at Anfield as well against them. Um, I'm, I'm with Dan on this one. I'm going to wait for the lineups because it will decide whether I go with a draw or a City win. If Salah plays, I'm going to go down the middle and go for a draw at 3.72. Uh, if Salah's missing, I think he's that big a player for Liverpool at the moment. Um, if he misses this game, then City will go on and win it. Um, so I'll be back in City. But yeah, um, it's a huge game. Jurgen Klopp, actually, no, no coach has beaten Pep more times than Klopp. He's level with Mourinho on four wins. Um, but, yeah, li- line-ups for me. It's, it's going to be a great game to watch, really is, as a neutral. Um, I know you're a Liverpool fan, Paddy, so you'll probably be nervous as anything, but as a neutral, I'm going to really enjoy it. Um, look at both front lines, uh, playing attacking football, and plenty of goals, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great game. I hope so. And Salah has a new song that you will probably all have heard by now on social media, which I will yes. play out at the end of this podcast because I don't <laughs> think I need copyright for something like that. Um, lads, thank you very much for uh, this episode of the Pro Tips of Football Show. I'm sorry it's a bit shorter than usual. It's just the way that it ran this weekend. We'll be back next week uh, with a longer one. I think on Monday or Tuesday we'll come back with a Facebook Live one where we'll talk about what happened over the weekend. Then on Wednesday we'll have our combined 11 and we'll be back again on Thursday with another one of these podcasts and we'll have some uh, Syria and the league experts as well. So very quickly, uh, Dan, where are you on the internet? Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter, at Pro Tips to Dan, and on Facebook, also Pro Tips to Dan, facebook.com slash Pro Tips to Dan, all, all one word. Very good. Johnny, where are you? Uh, I'm Pro Tips to Johnny on Twitter, but more on Facebook. And guys, watch out next week for my Australian Open content on Facebook and Twitter. Magic. And Martin? Yeah, on 
Twitter, I run the Pro Tips to ENG account. Find me on there. And on Facebook, Pro Tips to Martin, three separate words. Come and say hello. All right. And, of course, you can uh, get me Pro Tips to Pod on Twitter, or you can get in touch with all of us if you go to Facebook.com and have a look for Pro Tips to UK. So, look, thanks, lads, for joining me. Uh, listeners, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Of course, you can listen to us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, and other Android podcatchers. We're on YouTube and the Pro Tips to Blog as well. Make sure and check out Pro tips.com where we will pay you for sharing your winning sports tips that's it then enjoy the football this weekend good luck so this, this is my song Salah Mane Mane what Porto for me no and we so cool teeny but that don't matter at all actually because we got Sala Aha money money do 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 and Bobby for me no But we so cutini oh But we've got Sala Aha money money do 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 and Bobby for me no And we so cutini oh but we've got Salah. Aha, money, money. And Bobby for me, no. But we so cool, teeny, oh. But we've got Salah. So that's my song anyway.